Hello class, so welcome to our next uh, and last topic for strategic cost management uh, during this special term. So our topic for or the topic for the last module is about the capital budgeting techniques, particularly uh, about screening of capital investment proposals. So, in case you have questions, uh, pwede mag-raise lang hand. So, for this session, so we have learning objectives. So, after the, our discussion, uh, you as a student should understand the commonly used capital budgeting techniques under the discounted cash flow approach as well as the non-discounted cash flow approach. So, we're going to study two types of approach in screening capital investment proposal. So, one is uh, the different techniques that use time value of money. So that is what we call the discounted cash flow approach. And the other one, the mo uh, most practical, but uh, do not use the time value of money techniques. So that's the non-discounted cash flow approach. Particularly, so after this session, you should be able to calculate the net present value. So these are the common method in screening capital investment proposal. So we have the net present value, the internal rate of return, the profitability index, and the discounted payback period of an investment proposal. Uh, of course, the next objective is about the non-discounted cash flow approach. So after this session, aside from, you should able to calculate the net present value, etc. You also need to calculate the payback period, the bailout payback period, the payback reciprocal, and the accounting rate of return of an investment proposal. Yeah, so let's start. So what do you mean by capital budgeting first? So first, uh, what do you mean by capital budgeting? So it is the process of analyzing projects and deciding which ones to accept. So this is uh, particularly about the screening of a capital budget, capital proposal, or capital investment proposal. So yeah, so we're talking about the whole process of uh, deciding or helping the management decides what, uh, which project uh, they need to choose. So if there are one or more uh, project available for the firm. So capital budgeting is the process of identifying. So identifying capital investment proposal, evaluating the capital investment proposal, and of course, implementing a firm's investment opportunities. So definitely. So after evaluating, after uh, identifying, you need to implement your uh, capital budgeting proposal. So meaning you need to uh, acquire the long-term assets. Because the capital budgeting, so capital, we're talking about long-term assets in this particular topic. So it seeks, it seeks to identify investment that will enhance a firm's competitive advantage and increase shareholders. So as you can see, this is also related in finance. In your financial management, your professor is always talk about uh, increasing the shareholders' wealth. So definitely, this is also the goal of uh, capital budget. So our assumption is that uh, if the management accountants propose the investment to be spent on uh, proposal number one, so assuming that's the acquisition of a new business or a new company, so our assumption is that that proposal will contribute in uh, increasing the shareholders' wealth. So meaning in the future, so most probably not now, or not now, but in the future, the shareholders' wealth will increase because of that. Uh, investment proposal. So that's why we need to evaluate what are the different type of uh, capital investments available for the firm and which among the capital investment proposal will yield a higher uh, sure, higher yield or in or high, highest effect in the shareholders wealth of the firm. So when we talk about shareholders wealth, so the effect should be reflected in the shareholders' pricing. Uh, maybe not now, but in the future. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, the typical capital budgeting decisions involves a large upfront investment followed by a series of smaller cash inflow. So these are the typical cash flow uh, structures in capital budgeting. So definitely at the start or at day zero, at day zero, uh, it involves a large money, but uh, usually that is an outflow. So in your uh, cash outflow at day zero, but later on, of course, you're going to use it so it will yield uh, cash flow or re uh, return uh, in terms of cash flow. And this cash flow is sometimes smaller, smaller. So, meaning your revenue converted into cash flow will be realized because you use the capital investment. So, yun. Sorry, na magdito pa lang. Yeah. Poor capital bud uh, budgeting decisions can ultimately result in company bankruptcy. So this is true because uh, in the previous bullet point, so I told you that uh, based on the capital stock, uh, the structure of the cash flow is that at day zero, it involves large sum of money. So if you're not going to realize the estimated smaller cash inflows, take note that is an inflow, so uh, definitely it will uh, it can make your company bankrupt because of the large cost of investments involved in capital budgeting. So far, do you have questions, class? May tanong ba? Hindi din yung mga discuss ko. So, wala. Okay, so next slide. Ayan, so what are the typical capital budgeting decisions? So, from time to time, this you will experience this type of uh, project, capital investment project. So, first one is the plant expansion. So, you already have your building and you want to, uh, for example, your building uh, only have seven floor and you want to extend that to uh, 10 floor, for example, or you want to construct uh, additional wing, for example, so that is plant expansion. Uh, equipment replacement. So, if you want to buy a new type of equipment, you of your own one. Cost reduction, so before you are using a uh, manual accounting system, but this time you're going to use uh, accounting information, uh, computerized accounting information system, yeah, because ultimately your total cost of managing the accounting system will be lower in the future. So you know, lease or buy, so before you are renting your building, but uh, you are uh, evaluating the possibility of acquiring the this asset or the this building and the other one is equipment selection uh, you don't have any any type of equipment and you want to buy an equipment so there's a difference between the equipment replacement and equipment selection so these are the typical type of capital buy products yeah so the capital budgeting uh, involves different process so these are the typical uh, process in the capital budgeting uh, investment. Okay, first identification and definition of capital investment proposal. So this should be uh, based on the uh, strategies of the firm. Uh, set in the strategic planning. Then after identifying the different uh, possible project, so definitely you will search for uh, the asset. You will search for the asset. And later on, you need to acquire different information. So uh, information with regards to the cash flow, for example, so the suppliers, rather than different type of expense that will be involved. Uh, you need also those information making the uh, capital investment evaluation. So after gathering all of the information, so you will select which among the capital investment proposal will yield a higher 
return in terms of shareholders well. Uh, financing is identifying uh, uh, where do you get the funds needed to acquire the asset. So it can be through issuance of uh, bonds, so meaning utang ka, or through issuance of equity securities, so meaning you're going to issue new shares of stocks. Or if you're going to use your retained earnings, so meaning internal financing. No? So meaning the cash flow generated from uh, uh, operations. So that will be the money that you will use in buying the asset. And of course, so after those steps, so you will uh, need to implement your capital investment proposal. But after implementation, you also need to monitor. So what are you going to monitor? The cash flow. So remember at the information acquisition, you estimate different type of cash flow because that flow will be used in the uh, your selection uh, procedure. So ito yun, wait. Dito sa step na yan. But later on, syempre, you need to monitor also the operation of the firm so that uh, you should achieve your target cash flow in the future. Uh, because kung hindi mo ma-achieve yung target cash flow, for example, you estimated a 10,000 cash flow every month. However, your actual cash flow is not 10,000, so definitely your NPB uh, will be wrong. No? So before in the selection period, you estimate that the NPB will be 1,000. But if you're not going to achieve or reach your target cash flow every month, so definitely you will not realize the uh, estimated NPB you have identified during the selection period. Nagets ba ako Question class. Uh, maybe you have questions. Okay. So if you have any question, ha, huh, you can uh, ask me. Or you can you know, chat your question. Ayan. So these are the different capital budgeting techniques. So I told you before that it will be divided into two. One, uh, the discounted cash flow. The time adjusted and uh, this cash flow uh, use uh, time value of money. So number one is the net present value uh, technique. So this is uh, very common, uh, not common. So the very uh, popular uh, capital budgeting technique is the net present value. So most of the academics, meaning the professors in the field of finance and management accounting, management accounting tends to uh, promote the use of net present value. But aside from the net present value, we have the internal rate of return. Actually, three common uh, capital budgeting techniques that uh, being used in the practice are these three. Yung net present value, the internal rate and of return, and also the payback period. However, for academics, uh, they promote the use of net present value. Why? Why net present value? Because I told you before that the purpose of capital budgeting technique is to identify capital investment proposal that will yield a higher increase in the shareholders' wealth. So in the net present value, the net present value is the estimated increase in the shareholders' wealth. So all of these techniques, uh, the net present value uh, is the techniques that gives you an estimate of the increase in the shareholders' wealth. Do you get my class? Do you have any question? So, yun. So, kaya for academics, the most favorable technique is the net present value. However, uh, in the industry or in the actual practice, uh, most companies, based on research conducted before, I'm not sure if there is an updated research, uh, most companies particularly in Australia and in Southeast Asia, they use the internal rate of return. Union. So for academics, net present value, so means also not about theory, but in reality, most of the firm use the internal rate of return. Profitability index. Uh, ano ba yan? 
So, yung profitability is actually the technique used uh, in case uh, two project uh, ano ba sabihin to? Two project will yield the same NPV. Para ganun. Same NPV or different NPV but also different capital investments. So, yun. Kasi medyo mahirap mag-decide uh, if Limbawa, for example, so si asset A, oh, ayaw. Ay, ay, sumulat. So, for example, si asset A, the capital investment is 10,000 and the NPV is 1,000. However, capital B, the investment is uh, 20,000 and the NPV is 2,000, for example. So, uh, for proposal B, the NPB is much higher than proposal A. However, it also involves a, a higher capital investment, yung 20,000 investment. So therefore, you cannot decide per se. So you will use the profitability index. Yeah. And we also have the discounted payback period. Uh, I told, told you a while ago that payback period is one of the uh, most commonly used technique actually it is a must the payback period is a must technique for capital investment evaluation uh, however uh, one of the disadvantages of payback period is it does not use uh, time value of money so therefore uh, to eliminate that type of uh, disadvantage disadvantages for payback period so they incorporate the time value of money in the payback period so that is the discounted payback period for the non-discounted cash flow technique so we have the payback period the bail out payback period so the pay bail out payback period uh, is or recognize the salvage value in the computation of the payback period because in the payback period we don't uh, usually uh, incorporate the salvage value of the asset and payback reciprocal is the estimate of uh, internal rate of return uh, accounting rate of return so all of the techniques aside from the accounting rate of return use cash flow so as you can see uh, it uses cash flow yeah. and the only technique that use accounting income is the accounting rate of return or book value rate of return any question class so yeah so the only technique is uh, accounting income is the accounting rate of return or the value rate of return. yeah Okay, so let's start with the discounted cash flow technique. So first is the net present value. Ayan, so the net present value. So tawag is net present value because uh, we are considering all of the present value of all of the cash flow. So yun lang yung So the present value of projected cash inflow. So this, these are the formula for the uh, NPB. So the present value of projected cash inflows minus the present value of its cost or the present value of cash outflow. So yung formula dito sa baba, ayun. So, yung CF1 uh, is the uh, cash flow at year 1, yun ibig sabihin nun, uh, plus CF2, so meaning the cash flow at year 2, and the CFN meaning the last cash flow, uh, so CF1, CF2, and CFN are all uh, cash inflows, yeah, plus the cash flow at day zero. So this one, yeah, and the cash flow at day zero usually is negative because that is cash outflow. So we have cash inflow, so that is positive, and cash outflow is usually negative. So definitely negative plus positive, you need to. Uh, deduct the positive or the negative to the 
positive cash flow. So as you can see, we have here the factor formula. So this is present value of one. Uh, this is the present value of one. So we, we need to compute for the present value of cash flow one, cash flow two, cash flow n, because the cash flow one, cash flow flow two, and cash flow n are all happens in the future. So yeah. So Class, baka may tanong, ha? Uh, do you have any question, class? Nag-gets ba yun? English Yes, Okay. So, kung walang tanong, let's continue the discussion. Okay, so look at the uh, example. So, bakit magtanong ha? Kasi uh, yung presentation ko, uh, this presentation is the presentation I use during my masterals <laughs> degree class, no? Nag-aaral ako ng masterals. So, nasa yung sa yung capital budget. So, yung ginagamit ko. But later on, we will apply the techniques dun sa handout na pre-provide ko sa inyo. Nakita niyo na ba 'yon? Tatagalog na nga ako. Nakita niyo ba 'yung class? Stop, sir. Sige. So 'yung background lang, hindi ko alam kung ni-try niyo na bang sagutan. Hindi pa po. Mm, sige. Ano kasi 'yan eh. Hindi ko alam kung madadalian kayo, mahirapan kayo kasi quiz ko 'yan before. Uh, actually, yung handout na yun is my quiz. Nung last ako nagturo ng Accounting 6, yun nga lang, uh, magbaba ako ng exam, pag tinignan mo yung <laughs> handout ko, talaga pinaglalaman ko talaga yung handout ko. So, combination ng difficult problem and easy problem. So, bandang dulo, may mga easy problem naman dun. So, parang ganito lang sa example. Pero, meron ding uh, comprehensive problem. So, kung nakita niyo yung medyo mahaba doon, comprehensive yun. Pero later on, di-discuss naman natin. Kung hindi ngayon, baka bukas or Saturday. Ha? Kasi exam na natin na Monday. Tama ba? Monday na yung exam natin? Hindi po pa Tuesday. Ah, Tuesday ba? O, so, pwede pa tayo mag-discuss ng Monday pa? Sige, okay lang. Ayun. Okay, so, ito na, gawin na lang natin. So, example, problem. So, you are a financial analyst for ABC Company, the director the director of capital budgeting. The director of capital budgeting has asked you to analyze analyze to propose capital investment. So, ibig sabihin, tapos na sila dun sa gathering of uh, different information or data kasi nakapag-provide na sila ng uh, information. So, nandun na sila sa evaluation stage. Yung ibig sabihin. So, each uh, so, yung project natin is Project X and Project Y. So, Project X can be acquisition of ABS-CBN, for example, because acquisition of another firm just like what will happen or what you will learn in your business combination class is also a capital investment project. 
di ba? So, di ba, marami kang pera, marami kang funds. So, one of your strategy is to expand your business. Uh, conglomerate, you want to be a conglomerate firm wherein uh, your business is not only about education or not about food. You're going to buy another firm, uh, entertainment, a different in different industry so yun for example so acquisition of new firm is also a capital investment proposal parang ganun ayan so yun yung project x and we have project y so project y is uh, for example another uh, company but uh, in different industry naman parang ganun so you have two projects okay so uh, we have a cash flow uh, cash flow are provided to us so ito medyo madali uh, mag-evaluate of uh, different type of capital investment proposal. But siya madali kasi if you look at the cash flow at year zero, pag sinabing year zero, that is today. So that's the day you will uh, invest in the capital uh, investment project. So at day zero, your cap, uh, cash outflow, kaya negative yan kasi outflow yan. So meaning palabas yung funds from the firm to uh, to different party kasi depende kung anong type of project yun. So, both of the cash outflow are 10,000. So, 10,000 for project X and 10,000 for project Y. So, this type of capital investment problems are not that difficult kasi yung investment project mo, pareho naman eh. Pareho naman yung investment cost niya. So, 10,000 for project X and 10,000 for project Y. So, aside from the cash outflow at uh, year zero, so we have a series of cash flow. So, if you look at the cash flow, so for project X, uh, cash flow from year one to year four are not the same. So, for example, for year one, the cash inflow for project X is 6,500. For year two and year three, the cash inflow is 3,000. Uh, year two and year three is 3,000. For year four is 1,000. However, for project Y, uh, the cash flow are all the same. From year one to year four, the cash flow is 3,500. So, yeah. so we have different type of cash flows. So, para alam kung paano gagawin natin in case ganyan yung structure ng no, cash flow natin. So, do you have any question dun sa given? No problem? Okay, wala. Sige, let's continue. Tuloy yung TV ata. So, ang question lang naman sa atin is calculate each project's net present value. So, yun lang ang tinatanong sa atin. So, I told you before na uh, actually this is a timeline. So, timeline method yan. Yan, timeline yan eh, actually. Ginawa ko lang Excel. So, we have year zero. Ito yung timeline na actually kung sinusulat ko. So, we have year zero, year one, year two, year three, year four. Yan. So, nandito yung 10,000. Yan. Year one is 6,500. Year two is 3,000. Year three, 3,000. And year four, uh, 1,000. So, this is 1,000. 1,000 yan. So, uh, just imagine, so this is a timeline, but this is in tabular form or uh, kasi nasa graduate school kami during that time. So most of we are going to use Excel. Uh, in capital budgeting, so this is net present value. So as you can see, yung 6,500 will be uh, your cash inflow after period one. So this is will happen uh, in the future. The 3,000 in year two will happen after two periods. Uh, the another 3,000 will happen after three periods. And the 1,000 will happen at the end of four periods. Take note at the end of the period. So therefore, you cannot compare the 6,500 uh, 6, against this is a 10,000. Why? Because itong 10,000 uh, will happen today. Pero yung 6,500 will happen in the future. So therefore, to make it comparable, we need to compute for the present value of all of this future cash flow. Yan. So that's why we have a present value factor in this one. So what interest rate are you going to use? 
if the cost of capital is provided to us, uh, we need to use the cost of capital. So, bakit cost of capital? Because I told you before, in the capital budgeting process, diba? so one of the steps is identifying where do, where are you going to get the funds that you need in order for you to push through the project. So I told you before, it can be through issuance of bonds or through issuance of uh, shares of stocks or through the use of your retained earnings. So meaning the internal financing. Of course, if you're going to issue bonds, the investor of your bonds will ask a return from you. So in terms of interest, di ba? Pag nangutang ka, hindi siya ka ng bonds, utang kasi yung bonds eh. So they want a return in terms of interest. Siyempre, babayaran mo sila ng interest. So that interest is what we call the cost of capital because the proceeds from bonds is your capital in acquiring the asset. So yun yung ibig sabihin na. If you're going to issue equity securities, they will ask you share in your profits. Yung 6, 5, 3,000, 3,000, 1,000, they are all profits in terms of cash flow. Kasi pinag profits natin, accounting income yun eh. So in terms of cash flow, you will have a return of 6, 5, 3,000, 3,000, and 1,000. Of course, the if you're going to issue equity securities, they are owner of the firm, so therefore they will ask a share in the profits. And this share in profits, uh, will be provided to them in terms of dividends. So yung dividends naman na binabayad mo sa mga shareholders mo, that is also a cost of capital. Kasi yung equity mo is a capital. Nagets ba yun? Same with the retained earnings. So that's why kapag given yung uh, pag given yung cost of capital, yung cost of capital ang gagamitin natin in, uh, to compute for the uh, tawag dito? for the present value of all of future cash flow. However, sometimes, given yung cost of capital, uh, misa na ginagamit dyan is the uh, implicit discount rate, but most of the time, hurdle rate ang tinatawag. Ang, ay, tinatawag, ang ginagamit na interest rate. When we talk about hurdle rate, ang pinagkaiba nila doon sa cost of capital, when we talk about hurdle rate, uh, doon sa hurdle rate, that is the uh, usually, ano yan, subjective. That is a subjective interest rate. What do you mean by subjective? So most probably, kung na, uh, if you're going to issue loan, you're, sabi ko, bonds. So you're going to issue bonds, the interest rate is 10%. So you will, you will just add additional premium for equity, for example. Alibaba, for equity, 5%, for example. So therefore, 15% yung gagamitin mo na hurdle rate. So medyo subjective kasi hindi mo kinumpit yung 5%. Eh. Inassume mo lang. So, yun ang pinagkaiba dun sa cost of capital tsaka sa hurdle rate. In case given si cost of capital tsaka si hurdle rate, of course, you're going to use her, uh, cost of capital instead of hurdle rate. Kasi mas objective yung cost of capital kesa dun sa hurdle rate. Get them. Hmm, sige, sumagot kayo plus, ha? Sige. Ayan. Now, let's compute for the present value factor. So take note, we're going to use the 12% discount rate. So the formula is 1 plus i raised to uh, negative n. Remember, for example, for number 1, so that is 1 plus 12% raised to negative 1. Diba? Parang ganyan. So negative 1. So tinan natin nga. Ayan. So, that will be 0 0.8929. Sige nga, class. Try to compute kung makukompute nyo itong 0 0.89.29. Yes, sir. Makukompute na. Sigurado. Sige. So, meaning for period 2, for this 3,000, uh, ito. So, that will be 1 plus 12% raised to negative 2. Diba? So, anong sagot nyo dun sa 1.12 uh, raised to negative 2? 0. 0.7972. 0. 0.7972. So, that is correct. So, at least naintindihan naman. So, meaning, ito yung mga factor. So, we're going to use the present value of 1 factor. 
uh, why present value of one factor kasi yung series of cash uh, yung cash flow natin are not the same iba pa iba iba sila so therefore present value of one factor so yun lang medyo mahirap diyan uh, kasi uh, bawat cash flow kapitin natin yung present value so ito yun so 0, 0.089 29 0.7972 0.7118 and 0.6355 syempre Um, next step is just multiply the cash flow dito sa present value factor. So, look at day zero. So, ang present value factor niyan is one. Uh, ito, just lagi ko ito sinasabi sa mga estudyante ko. Pero parang joke na lang din. Kasi sabi ng teacher ko nung high school, so, any number whose exponent is zero is equal to one. Yeah? Kasi, if you're going to compute the present value of this 10,000, so, that will be one plus, it should be written as one point Uh, 1 plus 0.12 or 12% raised to uh, negative 0. So, 0 yan. So, syempre, any number whose exponent 0 is equal to 1. Kaya ang present value factor niya is 1. So, pag kinumpit natin yung present value, so, for 6.5, so, ang present value niya is 5.803.85. For year 2, that's 2.391.6. For year 3, that's 2.135.4. And for year 4, for this 1,000, that is 635.50. So, as you can see, all of them are positive, present value. And the cash flow at the, uh, day 0 is negative, 10,000. So, therefore, definitely, you need to subtract the 10,000 to all of, from all of the positive cash inflow. And that's what we call the net present value, which is, in this case, this is 966.50. 35. So, how are you going to interpret this 966.35? So, I told you before that most academians favored the use of the net present value factor because that 966.35 is the estimate increase in the shareholder's wealth at the end of the life of the asset. So, ibig sabihin kung yung asset, ang estimated useful life niya is 4 years, so at the end of 4 years, it will contribute 966.35 doon sa shareholders well of the uh, share, shareholders. Nagets ba yun? Question plus. Sure. Ayan. Hmm, sige, nagets naman. Oh, may nagtaas. Sige, okay, question. Sige, CMG. Sir, sorry po, di ko po nasandan. Bakit po hmm. negative yung 10,000? Kasi, yung know, pag negative, ibig sabihin, cash outflow siya. Kasi di ba at day zero, doon ka bibili ng asset eh. So yung pera palabas. Kaya negative. Ah, okay po. Okay Outflow po. yan. Thank you, so, sir. Parang malinaw ah. Sige, kasi nag-English kasi ako. Nag-practice lang ako. Sige. Yung year Thank one you to po. year four. Papaliwanag ko parang mabuti. So year one to year four, as you can see, positive lot yan. Bakit positive? Eh kasi inflow of cash. Eh kasi di ba, kunyari, bumili ka ng, nagpatayo ka ng bagong building. Pag nagpatayo ka ng bagong building, definitely gagastos ka. So yung pinagpatayo mo ng bagong building, yun yung negative 10,000. Kasi nagpatayo ka eh, so lalabas yung pera sa'yo. Pag nagpatayo ka ng bagong building, anong ipoprovide sa'yo ng building? Mas madaming capacity. Halimbawa, eskwela tayo, US din, nagpatayo ng bagong building. So meron tayong bagong building. So therefore, meron tayong additional students, assuming face-to-face -face na yung klase. So kung meron tayong bagong estudyante, yung mga bagong estudyante yun, Uh, kasi kaya natin mag-accommodate ng mas maraming estudyante kasi may bago tayong building. Eh. So, yung mga bagong estudyante yun, mag uh, siyempre mag-provide sila ng tuition fee. So, yung tuition fee na ibabayad nila, yan yung 6,500, 3,000, 1,000. Kaya positive sila kasi inflow yung cash. Nagets ba? Thank you, sir. Thank you, oh, sige. po. Sige. O baka may tanong pa. Hmm, sige, DDC. Ganda naman pangalan ng estudyante ko ah. Sige. Okay. Sige, question. Tanong nyo na hindi nyo naiintindihan. Sige. Oh, dali. Sir, sir may shortcut po ba sa calculator? Ah. Or wala po. May shortcut sa calculator? Ako. Hmm. Actually, uh, depende dun sa cash flow. So kapag ganito yung cash flow natin, wala tayong magagawa dyan. Talagang isa-isa talaga ang pag-compute. Okay, 
Okay, po. Thank wala you. Pa tayo, wala pa tayong shortcut dyan. Actually, sa ibang book nga, uh, hindi, ito kasi is, ano to eh, uh, timeline technique. So, yung iba, uh, tabular technique ang ginagamit nila. Parang tabular. So, binabaliktad lang nila yan. Pero, ganyan pa rin sila mag-compute. So, imumultiply pa rin nila yung uh, cash flow dun sa uh, factor natin. So, ang tinuturo ko pa lang sa inyo is, uh, paano gagawin yung NPV? So, later on, pag-aaralan natin, paano natin kinocompute yung cash flow sa so, ibang topic yun. Sige, question pa. Kaya, sa klase kasi is, uh, if you notice kasi, medyo mahirap yung gagawin mo. Kasi nga, di ba? Ito madali. Kasi one year, one to year, four lang. No? Eh, yung capital budgeting techniques, uh, usually for, ano yan eh, uh, more than 5 years, more than 20 years, for example. So that's why in reality, syempre, gumagamit sila ng Excel. Ganun talaga. Pero sa klase, usually, mga ganyan lang taon. Kasi nga, medyo mahaba yung procedure na gagawin. May question pa ba? No, sir. Oh, sige. Oh, next na tayo kasi 58 slides to yun. Sana matapos natin. Ayan. So, parang ganito yung tabula. Ay, ito pala sa Excel. So, ito naman yung kay Project Y. So, itong 3-5, as you can see, pare-pareho yung uh, cash flow niya. If that is the case, ang gagamitin natin formula is the present value of ordinary annuity. Kasi annuity yung cash flow niya. So, ang formula natin is 1. Ah, ito pa yun. So, this is... Wait. Ayan. So, 1 plus 12% trace to negative 4 ulit. So, 1 minus over 12%. So, kumbaga, this is uh, 1 plus i raised to negative n, 1 minus over i siya. No? So, ito naman, hindi ka na magkocompute isa-isa. So, itong 1 plus 12% raised to negative 4, 1 minus over 12%, imumultiply mo na lang siya dito sa 3,500. So, sige nga, i-gawin nga natin yan. So, that will be 1.12 raised to negative 4, 1 minus answer, divided by 0.12. So, dapat ang makukuha mo doong factor is 3. Point... Okay, gusto mo ulit. So, anong nakuha niyong factor? Ay, sumulat eh. Three point zero three seven. Ayan, so dapat ako yun three point three point zero three seven three five. Yun, so kinu ako lang yung five uh, decimal uh, point ng factor natin. Imo multiply lang natin ng three thousand five hundred. Parang gan. So pag minu multiply mo yan sa three thousand five hundred. So, ang ipoprovide sa ito, pala hindi pala ako nag-ground off dyan. Kasi nga, Excel yan eh, actually. So, ang magiging present value ng 3,500 will be 10,630.72. So, pag minus natin yung sa 10,000, so, ang NPB natin is 630.72. Nakuha ba yun, class? Yes, possible. Yes, po. Sige, yan. So, Question. So, between Project X and Project Y, sino ngayon ang pipiliin natin? Which of the two are we going to uh, recommend to the management? Project X. Project X. Because Project X yields uh, the higher or highest NPB between the two capital investment proposal. Diba? Kasi 966 siya, 35 So, ito namang isa. Uh, only 630.72. Ngayon, ayan. So, kung, uh, kasi graduate school to, kaya dapat Excel. So, ito yung formula niya. So, pwede nyo balikan to later on. And if you want, you can try to use Excel and compute for the NPB. So, ito yung formula lang. Ayan. Kaso, di ko nalagay yung C40 po. Wala nyo dyan. C44, parang ano to, yan yung itong 10,000. 
C44 is the 10,000. So C45 to C48 yung uh, cash inflow. Yung 353535. C41 yan yung uh, 12%. So pwede niyo i-try. Ayan. So, what are the decision rule? So, if uh, NPB is greater than zero, so definitely we need to accept the project. Uh, halimbawa lang, ano yan, ah? uh, hindi siya, uh, wala ka alternative. For example, kung wala ka alternative, so bibili ka lang equipment, so kung ang NPB nung bibili mo equipment is higher than zero, so definitely you will accept the project. Kasi sabi ko kalina, uh, pag mamimili tayo, alternative 1, alternative 2. Siyempre, kung yung mas mataas na NPB, hindi lang zero. So, mas mataas na NPB, yun yung pipili natin project. Uh, kapag yung NPB is less than zero, so, i-reject -re natin yung project, halimbawa, negative, di ba? Pag less than zero, that is negative. So, why are we going to reject? Uh, kasi nga, yung NPB is the estimated increase do sa shareholders' wealth. So, if that is negative, so, meaning, if you push through the project, uh, ano mangyayari doon sa shareholders' wealth mo? Bababa siya. Sabihin. Ngayon, kung yung NPB mo is equal to zero, so technically, that is indifferent. Ibig sabihin, whether you choose to push through the project or not, yung shareholders' wealth mo will be the same. Kasi nga, yung NPB ng project mo is zero. Kaya lang ko akong tatanungin, so what are you going to do? Are you going to push the project or are you going to recommend the project if the NPB is zero? Kung akong tatanungin dyan, Ang sagot ko is yes because of the uh, qualitative factors that you need to consider. Anong qualitative factors? So, pag mayroon tayong bagong building, eh, syempre nag-estimate tayo ng increase doon sa working capital kasi mag-hire tayo ng new mag tayo ng new uh, maintenance, yung mga janitors natin. So, nakakatulong tayo doon sa employment rate sa country mo. Di ba? So, kahit walang additional return yung project mo, pero na-estimate mo naman yung Salaries or increase of working capital because of the increase in salaries, increase of your employees, for example. So, syempre maganda yun kasi wala nga return sa'yo, pero nakatulong ka naman sa iba. Di ba? Kaya kung <laughs> NPB mo is zero for me, so, or theoretically, you, sh you should uh, push through the project or sh you should recommend the project because of the qualitative factors na hindi natin napapakita dun sa quantitative techniques. Yung tinuturo kasi natin quantitative. Eh. Pero of course, mayroon mga qualitative factors. So. Nagets ba yan, class? Uh, agree ba kayo doon? Or do you have any any comments? Or do you want to say something? What do you think? Oh, wala daw. Sige. Okay, so wala. May absent na isa. O oh, dalawa. Ayan. So, quick check. O ito, o, compete nyo to class ha. Hindi to para sa akin, para sa inyo to. Kayo magsasagot ito. So, Denny Associates has been offered a four-year contract to supply the computing requirements for a local bank. So, the cash flow information are as follows. So, ito yung mga cost. So, we have cost of computer equipment. So, that is 250000 Working capital required. So, cost din yan. So, 20000 Upgrading of equipment in two years, so that's 90,000. Salvage value of the equipment in four years, 10,000. And the annual net cash inflow is 120,000. So, sabi niya, the working capital will be released at the end of the contract. And then it associates requires a 14% return. So, if you notice, yung 14% is not cost of capital, uh, hurdle rate lang yan. So, Hindi ko pa pala natuturo ito. Yung how to compute for the cost of your investment. So, syempre ito, 250, 20, ayan, uh, 90,000 for example are all cash outflow. Yung salvage value of quick equipment, cash inflow yan, pero at the end of 4 years. Ano ibig sabihin niya? Nagets ba yun? Kasi di ba, you need a cash outflow and you need cash inflow. May question ba dyan? O try to answer class ha. So regardless kung tama mali sagot mo, try mo lang sagutan. Tapos paliwanag lang natin later. Oh. So ang tanong, what is the net, net present value of the contract with the local bank? 
So, yun. So, yun natin natanong. So, NTB lang. So, try nyo munang isolve class. Tapos, mag-poll tayo kung sino yung sasagot ng A, B, C, or D. O, isolve nyo muna tapos mamaya pilin tayo sa choices. lang ako. Kopyahin ko lang to. Ayan. So, I'm giving you 3 minutes. Unless may tanong mo. Tapos sinasolve nyo ba? Magantay ako ah. Oh. Yung iba sumagot na. One minute na lang. Okay, so uh Ayan, so 5 yung sagot ng number 4. So yung 9, walang response. So tignan natin kung ano yung tamang sagot. Ito yung mali o oh, number. <laughs> ang tamang sagot is letter B ang tamang sagot. Diba? So bakit letter B ang tamang sagot? So I told you before. So ito yung uh, table form na sinasabi ko sa inyo. So, year zero, so we have investment in 250,000. So, ba't kaya kayo nagkamali? So, tingnan nyo ba't kayo nagkamali doon. So, 250 is cash flow. Kailan mangyayari yan? At day zero. So, therefore, ang factor nun is one. Kasi nga sabi ko kanina, any number whose exponent is zero is equal to one. So, syempre, ang present value niyan is 250,000. Yan. So, yung working capital, syempre, investment din yan. Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba? So, ang example ko dito kalina, sabi ko, pag napatayo na tayo ng bagong building, we need to hire uh, new uh, janitors, for example, because they need to clean the building. We also need to hire uh, 
security guards. So, yung sweldo ng security guards and the janitors are increase in working capital. So, that is also a cash outflow. So, kailan mangyari yan at day zero pa din. So, uh, ito. So, that is, uh, uh, so year one yon Exponent ulit is zero. So, that's why ang factor is one. So, that is uh, 20,000. So, meron tayong annual net, net cash inflow. So, yun yung 120,000. So, ito yung cash flow mo every year. Kaya year one to year four, sabi niya. Cash inflow yan. So, syempre, so one plus 14% raised to negative four. 1 minus yung factor na yon divided by 0.14, so lalabas yung 2.914. So, ang present value nyo is 3.49680. So, upgrading of equipment, so sabi ko cost of investment yan, pero take note, mangyayari yan at year 2, hindi year 1. Diba? Kasi nakalagay naman sa data. So, so yan o, oh, in year 2. So, therefore, sa year 2 siya manggagaling. Ayan. So, ang factor nun is Oh, so, 1.14 yan. 1.14 raised to negative 2. Kasi sa year 2 siya, mang, sa year two siya gaga, mangyari. Eh. So, that is 0.76946. So, pag minultiply natin ng 90,000, so that is 69,210. Yung salvage value, syempre at the end of year. So, mabibenta natin yung asset. Yung 250 out of 250, 10,000 na lang yung magiging proceeds pag binenta natin yung equipment. So, at year 4 siya manggagaling. So, ang computation mo doon ng factor is 1.14 raised to negative 4. So, that is 0.592. Ayan. Kaya pag minultiply natin ng 10,000, that is 5912. Yung working capital will be ready. Siyempre, wala, uh, wala na equipment. Halimbawa, yung building mo, gigibain mo na. Ay, siyempre, sino... Ba't kailangan mo pa ng janitor? Ba't kailangan mo pa security guard? So, wala na lang lililisin. Wala na rin babantayan. So, marirelease na yung investment mo doon sa working capital. Siyempre, hindi lang naman yun yung working capital increase. Marami pa. Diba? Uh, in example ko lang yun. No? So, yung working capital mo, marirelease na. So, therefore, that will be an inflow of cash. Pero kailan siya mangyayari? At year 4. So, therefore, ang present value factor din is 0.5992. So, pag minultiply natin sa 20,000, so that will be 11,840. So, add lang lahat yan. So, lalabas, that is 28,230. So, walang tumama sagot. No? Ba't kaya tayo nagkamali? Anyone who wants to share? Nakas <laughs> may pa. Ha? Huh? Meron ba? Magtatawag ba ako? Pag di sumagot, minus 5. Pag sumagot, tama, plus 2. Pag tinawag, mali sagot, minus 5 pa din. O minus 2. Ngayon, pag nag-volunteer, tama sagot, plus 2. Pag nag-volunteer, mali sagot, lalang. Wala? O, oh, walang gusto sumagod. Natakot yata eh. Sige, tuloy na lang natin kasi ba di natin matapos. Ah, okay. So, later on, practice tayo ng NPB. Ha? Uh, tinuturo ko lang muna yung mga techniques. So, siguro bukas. Kasi kailangan matapos ko to. So, bukas, uh, start tayo mag-compute. So, balikan niyo yung video, then apply to the problems bago ko siya isolve. Para at least, pag sinasolve ko, maintindihan niyo ba't gano'n yung ginawa. So, yung mas mahirap ng konti, yung internal rate of return na tinatawag natin doon. Ito, mahirap ito. No? Mas mahirap siya doon sa NPB techniques. NPB, dali-dali lang. Eh. Basta alam mo lang kung cash inflow, cash outflow, kailan mangyayari, and what factor are you going to use. At dali-dali lang ng NPB. So, mas mahirap, uh, so, much difficult yung tinatawag natin na internal rate of return. Pero I will tell you what is the logic for internal rate of return. Ayan. So, baka lumabas sa theory. So, this is also known as the discounted rate of return and the time-adjusted rate of return. Ayan. So, bakit time-adjusted rate of return? Kasi, ina-adjust natin yung discount rate o yung cost of capital such 
that if you're going to use the internal rate of return, the present value or the NPV will be equal to zero. So yun ang logic niya. Yan. Kasi halimbawa, if you use the 14%, so it will give you, I mean, yung sa ginawa natin multiple choice kanina, kapag 14% yung ginamit mong uh, discount rate, so meron kang 28,000 na NPV. So ang gagawin natin, i-adjust natin yung discount rate para ang NPV mo dapat zero. Pag kinuha mo yung NPV ng project, dapat mag-equal to sa zero. So yung interest rate, that will give you an NPV of zero. So yun yung tinatawag natin na internal rate of return. Yung tinatawag natin. So this is the rate of return which equates, ito pa, nasakala niya, the present value of the future cash inflow with the cost of the investment. So kung equal yung present value ng future cash inflow mo doon sa cost of investment mo, definitely yung NPV mo magiging zero siya. So yun ang logic ng internal rate of return. So that's why medyo mas mahirap to ng konti. Bakit mas mahirap? Kasi para maging zero yung NPV mo, madaming discount rate yung posible mong pwedeng gawin. Di ba? Yan. Di ko lang kung nare-realize nare yun. So, hindi mo kasi mako-compute. There is, kumbaga parang ano yan eh. Parang yung test dun sa COVID, di ba? So, kapag, ano ba yung mapinagsasabi ko? Pag rapid test, di naman niya sinasabi talaga sa'yo na may COVID ka. Sinasabi niya lang, meron kang antibodies dun sa system mo that fights COVID. Parang ganun. So, yun yun. Di ko lang tama ba yung nire-relate ko siya. Sabi niya, it works very well if a project's cash flows are identical, ah, okay, are identical every year. So, mas madaling gawin yung IRR if your cash inflow are all the same. So, kapag annuity, yung cash inflow mo, madaling gamitin yung internal rate of return. Ngayon, if the ca annual cash flow are not identical, kagaya nung, if you remember, si Project X and Project Y. Si Project X, iba-iba yung cash inflow niya, si Project Y, pare-parehong cash inflow niya. So therefore, if you're going to use the IRR method, mas madali kapag si Project Y yung kukumpitan ng na IRR kesa kay Project X. Diba? Alam natin bakit. Kasi, pala, if the annual cash flow are not identical, sabi ko dyan, ako nagsabi niyan kasi ako nagsulat, ang PowerPoint eh, are not identical, yan, are not identical, anong gagawin nating method? Trial and error process must be used to find the internal rate of return. So, yan yan. So, ang logic or model na ginagawa natin is ito. Model lang yan, class, pero hindi talaga yan yung pinaka-formula. So, as you notice, yung cash flow 1, diniscount dun sa IRR. Ito. Cash flow 2, diniscount dun sa IRR. Cash flow 3, diniscount dun sa IRR. At ang NPB natin, ito yung nahanap niya din, di ba? NPB niyan is equal to 0. Yun nga lang, hindi siya ganyan kasimple kasi nga, ang hinahanap natin is the discount rate. Question? May question ba? Dali lang ha, may nagtatanong ko. Oh, so walang tanong ha. So yun lang yung logic niyan. maging chair. Alam mo, from time to time may problem. Sige, kung walang problem, oh, sige, try natin i-apply. Same problem pa din. Dito pa rin tayo kay ABC Company. Although, pag ako mga problem, lahat naman ABC. So, you are the financial analyst pa rin for ABC Company, the director of capital budgeting has asked you to analyze 
two proposed capital investments. So we have project X and project Y. Each project has a cost of 10,000 in cost of capital is 12%. But this time, uh, this 12,000 uh, is not relevant anymore kasi. Ah, relevant siya pagdating sa evaluation. Pero in terms of computation of the IRR, hindi na natin gagamitin yung 12%. Kasi nga, di ba sabi ko kalina, trial and error tayo. The projected, pro, the project's expected cash net cash flow, at net to? Net cash flows are as follow. Cash flow lang dapat yan. So, same naman ito. So, same lang yan. So, ang tinatanong sa atin is, calculate each project's internal rate of return. So, ngayon, kung Excel, ito, in-Excel ko to Medyo madali. Uh, may formula naman dyan. Ito lang. So, as you can see, IRR lang. Tapos, C69 to C73. So, ito yan. 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. So, lalabas na yung internal rate of return natin. Which is... Uh, dapat pala, tinuro ko to. Kung paano. 18.5. 0.3%. So as you, as you can see, uh, from 12%, umabot dito sa 18.03%. Diba? 18.03%. Sige nga, pag-aralan nga natin. Uh, kasi, if you notice, if we're going to use yung discount rate of 12%, alam nga, wait lang. Ayaw gumana nung ano ko eh. If we're going to use itong cost of capital na 12%, di ba? If you remember, balikan natin yung uh, NPV niyan. Naalala niyo ba yung NPV? Nine Ito, di ba? So, that is 966.35. Ganyan natin. Ayan. So, kapag 12%, ibig sabihin, di ba, nung ginamit ko yung 12%, so, ang NPB is 966. Uh, 35. So, ang sabi natin kasi, kapag internal rate of return, dapat ang NPB natin is equals to zero. So, ang question, paano magiging zero yung NPB? So, siyempre, tataasan mo yung discount rate, di ba? So, habang tumataas, di ba, remember sa intermediate accounting nyo, so, habang tumataas yung discount rate, bumababa yung present value. So, ganun din yung logic dyan. So, habang tinataasan ko yung 12%, bumababa din yung NPB. Di ba? So, halimbawa, ito, alam na natin eh, 18.03%. Siyempre, mahirap dyan kasi di mo naman alam na 18. Nagkataon lang na from this problem, sinabi niya na using Excel, so that will give you 18.03%. So, try lang natin kasi... Halimbawa, kung 18% yung discount rate na gagamitin ko, so ano yung magiging NPB? Nag-gets ba yung class? No? Pero ang gagawin mo dyan, di ba sabi ko kalina, trial and error yan. Ibig sabihin, kasi ang goal natin, mag-zero yung 966, mag-zero yan eh. So, para mag-zero yan, dapat mas mataso sa 12%. So, ibig sabihin, kukumpitin mo yung present value ng lahat ng cash flow na yan, lahat ng mataas sa 12%, hanggang sa mag-zero yung NPB. So, ibig sabihin, ito try mo yung 13%, ito try mo yung 14%, try mo yung 15%, ito try mo yung 16%, try mo yung 17%, hanggang umabot ka dito sa 18.03%. Kuha? Nagets ba yun? Kaya favorite ko itong IRR kasi ayaw ng mga sudyante ito. Pag tinuro ko yan, kahit sa review, ganyan ko siya tinuturo. So, Siyempre, ang NPB nung 10,000, ang factor niyan is, kahit gamitin mo naman 8%, di ba? Ang exponent niya is 0. So, ang factor nitong 18,000 na yan is 1 pa din. So, therefore, 10,000 pa din yan. So, ang, ang present value nung 10,000 is 10,000. So, ang problema ko yung 6,500. 
So yung 6, 5, so that will be 1.18 raised to negative 1. Diba? Naka tabular form tayo. So this is 0. Point, uh, ba 0. 0.8 4, 7, 5. Okay, mag-round off class, ah. So, dun lang sa screen ko nira round off. Pero pag nagka-calculator kayo, okay, mag-round off. So, yung 0. 0.8474576271, i-multiply ko dun sa 6,500. So, that will give me a present value of 5,508.47. 5, Plus, kaya ko lang ginaganito kasi alam ko ng 18.03, ha? Pero pagdating sa exam, try and error talaga yun. Ngayon, dun sa number 2 naman, so that will be 1, 1, 1.18 raised to negative 3. So, 1, 1, 1.18 raised to negative 2 So, that will be 0. 0. 0.7182 Wait lang klasa, medyo may ngayon Okay, so that is uh, 0.7182. So, you multiply. Uh, wag ira round up ulit. You multiply ko sa 3,000. So, that will be 2,000. 2,154.55. Naintindihan nyo ba yung sinusulat ko? Then, 1.18 raised to negative 3. So this is 0 0.6086 uh, we get around up ulit. multiply by 3000 so that will be 1825.89 and lastly 1.18 raised to negative 4 that is 0 0.5158. Wag yung uling round up. Multiply by 1,000. So this is 515.79. Class na ko ba lahat yun? Hindi ko alam kung ginagaya niyo ako. So, to, so, negative 10,000 plus 5508.47 plus 2154.55 plus 1825.89. Sana sa ako yung sagot. Plus uh, 515 ba yun? 0.79 plus 515.79. Tama. 515.79. So, ang NPB ko dito is 4.7. So, ibig sabihin, yung 18% is not the IRR. Kasi, ang goal nga natin, ang NPB, 0 eh. So, ito, 4.7 pa. Nakuha ba, class? Question? Hindi pa. Oh, hindi pa. So, ibig sabihin, mas mataas pa sa 18% yung IRR. So, itatry natin yung 19%. Sige, class. Hindi ko na isusulat. I-compete nyo yung NPB kapag 19%. So, yun ang gagawin nyo. Magtatawag ako mamaya, ha? Baka mamaya hindi nyo ginagawa, eh. O, sige, compete nyo muna yung NPB kapag 19%. Hindi ko na gagawin sa screen. 
sa papel ko na lang gagawin. Sige, gawin niyo muna class para alam niyo kung paano gagawin. Hmm, sige. Hmm, sige. Sige lang, tanong lang. Sir, yung sa yung magiging sagot hmm. po namin pag nakuha na po namin yung oh, uh, ko yung present ko. value. Pwede po ano, i-round off into two di two decimal na lang po. Or continuous ah, po yung ano. yung factor uh, wag niyo i-round off. Pero yung final Apo. answer, alibaw yung 5508.47. Yeah, i-round off Apo. na natin 'yan. Kaya lang baka hindi tayo magsakto doon sa 18.03, no? Tingnan natin kasi nagra-round off tayo ng NPV. Pero yung ah, factor yes. para medyo lumapit tayo sa 18.03, i-dire-diretso natin. Apo. Okay, sige. Kasi si Excel din nagra-round off, di ba? So try natin ha. Sali kayo class. <laughs> Sir, negative sa Oh, Mag negative wait lang. So ano nakuha mo sagot? Bilis negative mo ako, 140. Lang. Negative 140. 40. Negative 140. 140. Tama ba? Yes po. Okay, so negative 140. So syempre, dali lang ha. Uh, 4.7 negative 140 minus 4.7 wait lang solve ko lang din 4.7 ayan, o sige okay class so since eh tanong pa ba? Kaya lang pwede ba akong mag ano? Mag sandali lang wait lang ha. Hindi ko alam kasi kung wala akong shadow space eh. Try ko lang mag black uh, whiteboard. Ayun, sige. Try ko lang mag whiteboard ha. Si ba member yung hinahanap kong NPV is equal to 0, di ba? Kasi yung discount rate kapag NPV ko is equal to 0 so that will be my IRR, di ba? So ang gagawin ko diyan, yung x ko na ang hinahanap kong NPV, 0. Nagets ba yun, class? So yung x ko is 0 kasi yung 0 yung hinahanap kong NPV eh. Para yung interest rate, yun yung uh, yun yung IRR. <laughs> Siguro na nagigets ako doon. So kapag ang discount rate ko is 19% na kinumpit nyo kalina, sasabihin nyo kalina, that's negative, mukha naman tama, this is negative 140. Kapag 18%, that is positive 4.7. So, ibig sabihin, yung IRR ko, nasa pagitan nitong 18 tsaka 19%. Which is true naman. Kasi, di ba, pag ginamit ko yung Excel, as you can see kalina, ang tamang sagot dito kasi is 18.0 so, yung 18.03%, nasa pagitan ng 18 tsaka 19. Tama? Ngayon ang question, paano kung masasolve yung 18.03%? So, maganda tong computation natin kasi may basis tayo. Eh. Nalaman natin kung mali na ginagawa natin at tama. So, ang gagawin ko, mag interpolate ako ngayon. Kasi nasa pagitan ng 18 tsaka 19%. So, pag nag interpolate ako, so I'm uh, borrowing the techniques of Valix, kasi sa financial accounting ko ito natutunan. So, sa intermediate accounting. So, yung formula yung ginagamit ko dyan, pati yung mga naging sudyante ko sa intermediate accounting at sa Finman, alam nila yan. So, yung X minus lower rate over higher rate minus lower rate. Pero, ang ilalagay kong amount dito sa lower rate at higher rate, yung NPB nung lower rate, NPB nung higher rate. Nagets ba yun, class? For example, Ang hinahanap ko, so X, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, yung X, ang NPB ng X, 0. So, ilalagay ko dito yung 0. Ayan. Ang NPB ng lower rate, syempre, between 18 at 19, lower si 18. 
ang NPV ni lower rate is positive 4.7. So, 0 minus 4.7. Kuha? So, higher rate, eh, ang NPV ni higher rate, which is 19%, is negative 140. So, ilalagay ko dito, negative 140. So, minus lower rate, eh, ang NPV ng lower rate is 4.7. So, minus ako ng 4.7. Kuha? Kuha yun? So, pag hindi kuha, magtaas ng kamay, ha? So, 0 minus 4.7. This is negative 4.7. I-divide ko ng negative 140 minus 4.7. Magiging negative 144.7. Ama? So, i-divide natin sila. So, negative 4.7. I-divide ko ng negative 144.7. So, ang makukuha ko dyang sagot is positive kasi negative over negative is positive. This will be 0 0.0325 actually. So, 0 0.0325. E nasa pagitan ng 18 tsaka 19%. So, therefore, i-add ko yung lower rate which is 18%. Kaya ang makukuha kong sagot dapat 18.0325% or pag 2 decimal, 18.0325%. 0.3%. Nakuha. Naintindihan ba class? O, huwag kakalimutan itong formulang to. Itong formulang yan ay favorite kong formula yan. Kasi nagagamit ko yan sa lahat ng topic. Nagamit ko yan sa financial management. Pag kinukuha yung yield to maturity sa cost of capital. Ginagamit ko din yan pag kinukuha yung effective interest rate sa bonds payable, sa accounting for bonds payable. At gagamitin ko din yan pag kuha ng IRR. Which is, oh, so, gamit na gamit. Isang formula lang may memorize mo, magagamit mo na into different types of problem. May question ba, class? So, ang gagawin nyo, mamaya mag-practice. Paano natin matatapos? Ha? 3.28 na. Question. Plus, bibilis ako na lang ng konti, ha? Kasi, nakarecord naman to. Kasi, parang hindi natin matapos. Ang dami pang teknik, eh. So, babalik ako dun sa files na sinishare ko kanina. So, ulitin nyo lang yung ginagawa ko. Later on. Tapos, magsalt tayo ng mas mahirap next meeting, ha? Ang slide na ba tayo? lang ha. Inuuding lang. Class, baka may question habang hinahanap ko yung slide. Ayan. So, this is 18.03%. Ayan. So, pwede na Excel gamitin. So, ito naman, so, later on sa bahay, so gawin nyo lang yung ginawa kong technique. Ito naman kasi may basis ka na 14.96. So, kunin nyo lang yung NPB kapag 14%, then kunin nyo kapag 15%. So, since nasa pagitan, gagamitin mo ng X minus lower rate over higher rate minus lower rate para makuha mo yung saktong 14.96%. Ngayon, mamaya may tuturo pa ako ng formula. Bibilisan ko na lang. So, ah, ito. Ito yung shortcut. Kapag yung cash flow mo are all the same. So, sabi niya, if the future cash flows are the same every year, we can calculate the internal rate of return as follows. So, ito yan. So, ibig sabihin, limbawa for project Y, ba 3,500 yung cash flow mo from year 1 to year 4. So, therefore, you can compute the IRR using this formula. So, yung investment required, so meaning yung 10,000, yung 10,000, i-divide natin ng annual cash flow, so 3,500. So, ibig sabihin, yung factor, yung 2.8571 na makukuha natin, hahanapin natin yan dun sa
<ride> Douglas è in bar non è in bar so yun nga so I told you before na itong formula to pwede lang gamitin so you can only use this formula if the annual take note, annual net cash flow so meaning uh, in capital budgeting kasi we have three types of cash flow first yung initial investment is a being yung uh, yung sa example natin yung negative 10,000 then we have the annual cash flow. So, ibig sabihin yung cash inflow every year that you're going to use the assets. And we also have what we call the terminal cash flow. So, meaning yung cash flow at the end. Um, most, mostly, yung example ng terminal cash flow natin will be the working capital release. Kasi di ba remember your working capital is part of your initial investment or initial cash flow at day zero. Kasi ano siya, investment siya at day zero. Pero inflow siya at the end ng life ng asset mo. So, yung working capital at the end, tsaka yung salvage value, ang tawag mo doon is terminal cash flow. Ibig sabihin, cash flow that happens when you terminate the use of the asset. Yun ang ibig sabihin. Kaya tawag terminal cash flow. So, yung sinasabi niya rito, investment, i-divide lang ng annual net cash flow. So, yung annual net cash flow mo, kapag pare-pareho, pwede mo siyang gamitin. So, yung nakuha natin... Hmm. Yes. Sige. So, kapag 2.8, uh, ang gagawin natin sa 2.8, hanapin natin siya dun sa present value table natin. So, later on, papakita ko to sa inyo dun sa handout kasi parang binigay ko yata ito sa handout kung paano ginagawa, no? But for now, so yung trial error, so yun yung mas favored ko. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng cash flow mo are all the same. So therefore, dapat you are you familiarize yourself on how to compete for the IRR uh, using the trial and error method. So interpolation tayo. Any question or comment? Wala. So, kung may question kayo, hindi kayo naitindihan na. Kasi inaasyon ko na yung tindihan yung sinasabi ko. Okay, next. Tayo na naman lumipat. Okay, so these are our decision rule if uh, we're going to use the IRR. So, kapag yung IRR mo, if the internal rate of return is equal to or greater than the minimum required of return, so meaning yung cost of capital, Limbawa, sabi natin kanina, di ba, so Project X, di ba remember, do sa Project X natin, yung RRR natin is 18.03%. So, ikaw compare mo yan dun sa cost of capital. So, I think ang cost of capital natin is 12%. So, since mas mataas siya, acceptable yung project. Which is true naman, kasi if we're going to use the NPB, ang NPB niyan is... Uh, 966 yata, if I'm not mistaken. No? 966 plus yan. So, si Project Y naman, if we're going to use the uh, internal rate of return, so parang 16% ito. Diba? Uh, check nyo na lang kung tama ako. So, i-compare mo ulit yan dun sa uh, cost of capital, which is, uh, in this case kasi, our minimum required rate of return is yung cost of capital natin. So, mas mataas ulit yan dun sa 12%, which is the minimum required rate of return. So, therefore, acceptable pa rin si Project Y. But between Project X and Project Y, mas mataas yung internal rate of return ni Project X. So, therefore, si Project X yung pipiliin natin between Project X and Project Y. Which is true kapag NPP din tayo. Pag NPP kasi... 966 si Project X. Si Project Y, parang mga 600 yata. Kung tama yung naalala ko. So, 600 plus yata ito. Correct nyo na lang ako if I'm not correct. If I'm mistaken na lang. Sino na lang. So, sa madaling salita, whether you use NPB or whether you use the IRR, you will arrive at the same conclusion. So, yun lang ang gusto ko i-point dyan. Kasi kapag NPB ang gagamitin natin, Project X pipiliin natin. If we're going to use IRR, Project X pa din <clears throat> ang pipiliin natin. So therefore, whether IRR or NPB, 
you will arrive at the same answer. Yun nga lang, pinifavored natin yung NPB kasi sa NPB, nakocompute natin yung increase doon sa shareholders wealth, which is 966 for <coughs> Project X and 600 for Project Y. Hindi kagaya dito sa internal rate of return. Nakarate kasi. So, hindi masyadong meaningful yung percentage. Nakuha? If that is less than the minimum required of rate of return, syempre reject. Pag equal, uh, syempre yung NPB nun, ibig sabihin, equal dun sa uh, equal to Z, ano, uh, NPB is equal dun sa uh, zero, di ba? Parang ganun. Ayun. May question ba dito? Sa decision rule? Naintindihan, ha? Naintindihan, class. Pag may tanong, mag-raise lang ng handa para hindi ako tanong ng tanong kung naintindihan niyo. Okay, next. Kaya ang quick check. O, sige nga, try to compute to. Hindi ko ma-elite pa to. Okay, pala yung chat box. Okay, quick check. So, kagaya nung kalina, so, sabi niya the expected annual net cash inflow from a project is 22,000 over the next 5 years. The required investment now in the project is 79,300. So, what is the internal rate of return of the project? So, since uh, hindi ko alam kung makukompute nyo, so, meron kayong present value table, so, pwede mo siyang kompute. So, titignan mo siya dun sa present value of ordinary annuity. Bakit ordinary annuity? Kasi yung 22,000 natin every year for 5 years, 22,000 yung cash inflow natin. So, ordinary annuity dapat yun. So, ang gagawin lang natin dyan, yung 79, uh, 79.310, i-divide ko ng 22,000. So, lalabas, 79.310, i-divide ko ng 22,000. So, that will give me 3.605. So, itong 3.605 na yan, hahanapin ko yan dun sa present value table. Kaya wala kasi ako dun sa presentation ng present value table. So, check nyo na lang kung maka-check nyo. Take note, present value of ordinary annuity ang hahanapin nyo dyan. So, dapat nandito lang sa 10, 12, and 14% yung sagot nyo. No? So, hindi na ako magpo-poll kasi baka wala kayong present value table. So, ang lalabas sa sagot is letter A daw. Ayan pala. So, 3.605, which is the present value factor for an annuity over 5 years. Take note, mo, annuity sabi niya. When the interest rate is 12%. 12 yan na, tumaas lang. Tumaas. So, ang tamang sagot is letter B. Ang tamang sagot. Question? Wala. Okay, so yung next technique natin is profitability index. Uh, yung profitability index is used if the cash, uh, initial cash flow of, between projects are not the same. Kasi di ba sabi ko kalina, di ba si Project X mo, Project Y. Ang cash outflow ni Project X is 10,000. Ang cash outflow ni Project Y is 10,000, di ba? So parehong 10,000. Kaya we can, we can decide easily. So, nagkupitan tayo ng NPB dyan. Alam natin na favored si Project X kesa kay Project Y. So, ang problema natin, kapag halimbawa si X tapos si Y, ang Project X mo, 10,000, di ba? Halimbawa lang, ang NPB nito is 966. E itong si Project Y, ang, ang initial investment niya, 20,000. Pero ang NPB niya, 3,000. So, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na favored si Project Y kasi mas mataas yung NPB niya. Eh, si Project X, mababa yung NPB niya. Bakit hindi ka makapag-design na ganun? Eh, kasi mataas nga yung NPB ni Y, pero mataas din yung initial investment niya. So, si X, mababa yung NPB, pero mababa din yung initial investment niya. Ngayon, sabi ng ibang author, uh, in reality daw, NPB pa rin daw. Kasi, in effect, 3,000 pa din daw yung uh, titignan mo na rate of return. Eh, Kung ganun yung logic ko, eh kasi yung 10,000, pwede ko naman doblehin. Baka pag dinoble, sabagay so ito, 966. Pag dinoble ko, kung 966 times 2, edi less than 2,000. So, letter Y nga. Pero, ibig ko sabihin doon, 
Kasi sa example ko lang yun. E, kaya naman kasi mas mababa yung NPV ni X, mababa rin yung investment niya. Baka pag dinamihan mo yung investment mo kay X, mas tumas din yung NPV mo. Nagets ba yun? If that is the case, gagamitin na natin yung profitability index kapag ganito yung scenario natin. No? So, yung formula, doon sa, actually maraming formula yan, pero sa book, yung ginagamit niyang formula. Dalawa kasi yan. So, we have profitability index sa kayo tinatawag natin na uh, NPB index. So, mag-iba sila. No? So, ito, so yung present value lang. So, kapag profitability index compares present value of net cash flows to net investment and it measure efficiency of the use of capital. And take note, this should be greater than 1. So, kapag greater than 1, yung profitability index natin, ibig sabihin, positive yung NPB. Yan ibig sabihin niya. And take note, it does not calculate the rate of return. So, ang formula lang yan, yung present value ng net cash, so ito yung uh, annual cash flow natin, uh, i-divide lang, take note, ha, present value to, i-divide lang natin ng present value ng uh, cash flow at day zero, which is usually yung investment natin. Di ba? So, Pag tinignan mo yung example ito, so sabi niya, uh, ito rin, same example, mamadali na ako kasi mag na. So pag kinuha mo yung, ito lang yan. So, di ba? So take note, ito yung project X natin. So kanina kinumpit natin yung mga pr uh, present value ng cash flow. Ito yon So, uh, ano ito ibig sabihin ito? So that will be 10,966.01. So, Ibig sabihin, if you add yung 5803.57 plus 2391.58 plus 2135.34 plus 635.52 So, ang total nun is 10966.01 Kasi yung formula natin is present value of cash, uh, annual cash flow So, ito nga 10966.01 I-divide natin ng present value ng cash outflow which is 10,000 So, 10966 10,966.01, i-divide ko ng 10,000. So, lalabas, that's 1.096601. So, this is 1.10, ibig sabihin. So, 1.10. So, since ang uh, profitability index niya, halimbawa, di natin kinukumpare kay Project Y. Ang profitability index niya is 1.10. Ibig sabihin, di ka man nagkukumpare ng present value, ang uh, NPB, alam natin na ang NPB niya mas mataas kesa dun sa uh, cash outflow natin. Tama naman, which is 10,966.01 kasi. So, therefore, si Project X, acceptable. Si Project Y naman, ganun din. So, kukunin ko din yung present value ng bawat cash flow. Take note, inisa-isa ko lang, pero pwede rin annuity. Annuity din ang computation mo kasi same lang din naman yun. So, ang lalabas na present value ng cash flow natin is 10,630.72. So, pag dinivide ko yan ng 10,000, so lalabas yung 1.06. So as you can see, using profitability index, si Project X pa din ang pipiliin natin. No? Same lang yung lalabas. Ito kasi medyo madali kasi nga parehong 10,000. Pero kapag hindi na sila parehong 10,000, very useful na si profitability index. Yun. So meron pa akong 20 slides. So ito naman yung formula kung paano kayo compute So baka magamit nyo. Later nyo naman. Ayan. So natapos ko na yung uh, payback period, payback method naman tayo. So, ano ba to? Okay, so yung payback period natin. Uh, so, we have two types of payback period. So, una, so yung non-discounted cash flow method. So, dalaw, uh, tatlong method yan. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung hindi ko magamit ng time value of money. So, we have uh, three types of payback period uh, for techniques that don't recognize the time value of money, the time value of money factor. So, una yung basic payback method. So, ito yung pinaka uh, simple and pinaka normal. So, actually, pag sinabing payback period lang, so, ang tinutukoy lang dun is yung basic payback pe period natin. No? So, pero itong basic payback period, so, sabi ko nga before, uh, do not incorporate the salvage value. So, hindi nire-recognize yung salvage value Tsaka working capital actually. So, pag nirecognize mo na yung salvage value, ang tawag mo na doon is bailout method na. So, yung bailout method, recognize the salvage value. Yung basic payback, do not recognize the salvage value in the computation. Yung payback reciprocal, 
This is just an estimate of the internal rate of return. So ang formula nito is 1 divided by the basic payback method or basic payback period. So 1 over basic pay, payback method din. So ang interpretation mo dito sa payback, actually baka ma-discuss naman later, para lang siyang IRR din. Kasi nga, estimate of IRR lang yun. So yung discounted cash flow method, uh, ito lang yung payback period or payback method na uh, ini-incorporate yung time value of money dun sa payback period. So usually, ang payback period natin uh, tell us the number of years required to recover a project cost. Or how long, ito yung sinasagot niyang question. So how long does it take to get our money back? No? Yan yun. So usually, uh, ang rule dito, so pag mas mababa yung payback period, so the smaller the payback period, uh, much favorable on the part of the company. So, syempre gusto mo ma-recover. You, you want to recover your investment uh, faster than the usual, di ba? Kasi if you already recovered your investment, yung next cash flow mo, lahat profit na yon. Yun ang assumption natin. O lahat na will uh, tend to increase the shareholder's wealth. No? So, parang return na of investment. Yung after you recover your investment, your additional cash flow or your next cash flow will be return of investment na siya. So, kaya mas mababa yung payback period, mas favorable on the part of the evaluator. Ayan. So, ito lang yan. So, kapag basic payback, so, uh, but take note, uh, you, you will only use this formula if the annual cash flow equal. So, as you can see, so assuming your cash flow more are the same. Yeah. So therefore, you will use this formula. So yung original investment mo, i-divide mo lang mong annual cash inflow. So pwede itong gamitin dun kay Project Y because remember, yung original investment mo for Project Y is 10,000. Ang annual cash flow niya is 3,500. So kung kukupitin natin yung payback period, that is, that is just 10,000 divided by 3,500. So that will be 2.86. Ibig sabihin, 2.86 years, uh, recover mo na yung investment mo, which is 10,000. Ngayon, yung 0.86, pwedeng i-convert into number of months. Kasi, syempre, 2 years yung 2. Yung 0.86 is less than uh, 1 year. So, yung 0.86, uh, 0.8571, 4285715, ita times ko ng 12. So, pag lumabas yun, that's 10.8. 29. So, 10.29. Ibig sabihin, 2 years and 10 months. 10.29 months. So, itong 0.29, pwede ko rin i-multiply sa 30 days para makumpit ko kung ilang days yun. But generally, yung 2.86, acceptable na yan no? for the capital budgeting purposes. Pag may tanong, pwede mag-raise ng handa. So, ito yung example. Uh, gawin natin kay project X, kasi kay project ko, inakumpit ko na kalina, diba? That's 2 point, ay nawala, 2 point 86. Uh, tingnan natin kung tama, ha? dito lalabas. Uh, so, ito yung hiningi sa atin. So, calculate each project's basic payback, payback reciprocal, and discounted payback. And for bailout, assuming daw that the salvage value of both investment is 1,000 during the first year, then magdi-decrease ng 100 yung uh, salvage value every year. No? Pero baka next meeting na natin yung makover. No? Dito lang mo tayo sa basic payback. Ayan. So yung basic payback natin, as you can see, so ang gagawin mo dito, wala kasi standard formula, di ba? So ang gagawin ko lang dyan is imaminus ko lang yung uh, cash flow dun sa cash outflow every year hanggang sa mag-zero na siya. So, halimbawa, 10,000 minus 6,500. So, lalabas 3,500 pa. So, ibig sabihin, ito yun. 3,500 pa yung i-recover ko. So, meaning that's one year. So, one year na kagad. Ngayon, uh, meron pa akong i-recover na 3,500. So, I'm going to deduct yung 3,000 dito sa 3,500. So, meron pa akong 500 na need to recover. So, that is the second year. Ngayon yung, if you notice, yung third year ko, ang cash flow ko is 3,000. 
Pero ang kailangan ko na lang i-recover is 500. Kasi nag-positive na 2,500. Therefore, yung 500, i-divide ko na 3,000. Lalabas, 500 divided by 3,000. That is 0.16667. So, that is 0.17. Kaya, 2 years, kasi 1 year and uh, another year. Kaya, ang lalabas, ang payback period ko is 2.17 years. Nakuha ba yan? Yung basic payback. Ngayon, so nakuha ko na ito kalina. So, 10,000 over 3,500. So, lalabas yung 2.86. Which is the same din naman. Makukuha din naman natin kapag uh, yung ginawa natin kay Project X, gagawin din natin kay Project Y. Any question, class? May tanong ba? Kasi 4 o'clock na. Ako, matatapos ko kayo. 4 o'clock na, class. May tanong ba kayo? So, itutuloy na lang natin next meeting. So, next meeting... Uh, ang pag-uusapan natin is payback reciprocal. Actually, pwede ko na pala itong sabi, uh, i-discuss kasi one over payback period lang naman yun. So, it measures the rate of recovery of investment during the payback period. Uh, for projects with an even cash flow, the payback reciprocal can be computed on annual basis by dividing the cash inflow for the year by the net investment. And take note, the higher the payback reciprocal, the more worthwhile the projects become. So, gusto naman natin dito, mas mataas yung payback reciprocal, mas mataas, mas maganda. So, pag tinignan natin yung... Ay, wala pala. So, paano kumpitin yung payback reciprocal? So, 1 over the basic payback period lang. So, for project X, that will be 1. I-divide lang natin ng 2.17. Ano yung sabihin? So, 1 divided by 2.17. So, that is 46.17. 0.8%. For project Y naman, that is 1 over 2.86. So, 1 divided by 2.86. So, that is 0.35. This is 35%. So, as you can see, uh, between project X and project Y, sino favorable? Si project X. Kasi di ba sabi natin, pag payback period, mas mas baba, mas maganda. Pag payback reciprocal naman, mas mataas, mas maganda. So, as you can see, ang Payback reciprocal ni Project X 46.08. Ang payback reciprocal ni Project Y is 35%. So, mas mataas si 46.08, which is Project X. Kaya si Project X pa rin ang uh, pipiliin natin if we're going to use the payback reciprocal. So, kapag basic payback, yung mas mababa, mas maganda. Pag payback reciprocal, mas mataas, mas maganda. Any question? Hindi ko na itutuloy sa bailout. Kasi medyo mahaba pa yung computation. So, kulangan tayo ng time. So, tutuloy na lang natin to tomorrow. So, tomorrow meron din tayong collab. Uh, ilan na yung natapos natin? Uh, we are already done with the MPB, IRR, and the basic payback period, the profitability index, and the payback reciprocal. So, ang kulang natin is bailout. Bailout method, the discounted payback. And accounting rate of return. So, yun na lang. Tapos, makapag-solve na tayo ng handout natin. So, meron pa naman tayo until Monday. Sir, kailan po talaga exam? For Monday or Tuesday? Last time po kasi sabi niyo Monday. Ang inisip ko kasi, ang last, ang exam kasi is uh, 27. Ngayon, baka mamaya kasi 28 naman yung exam. So, okay lang naman na 28. So, kung 28 yung, check ko na lang yung schedule. Kung 28 ang final exam, So, ibig sabihin, 27, last day natin to discuss. Pwede pa tayo mag-discuss ng 27. Pero, for now, i-stop recording ko na.